Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. So to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fellow ground for it is time to seek the lord till he comes to rain righteousness on you so prepare ye the way of the lord make his path straight every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Oh, yes, all flesh shall see the salvation of God because the second coming is near, y'all. The second coming is near. I announce that on this September 26th. We need to prepare the way. We need to prepare ourselves for the second coming. We need to be about the kingdom of God's business. And that's one of the reasons that we're even here on Facebook, and I welcome you. I welcome you to the reading of the Most High Word of God, the very foundation of existence, the foundations of this earth, the foundations of gravity that keep our feet solid on the ground. He has great and wonderful plans for us, and that's why we're here. We're here to learn His Word, to put it in our hearts and to give it out to hungry, thirsty souls. Many lost people today not knowing what to do and they are gaining in fear as they see what's happening. So we are the ones with the answer. We have God's word. We have his presence. We are the ones who can repeat what he said to us so many times, do not fear. Do not fear. So today, y'all, I'd like to invite you to turn in your Bibles, and if you don't have one, I pray that you will make it number one on your priority list for this coming week to get one. And if you can get one, get on Amazon. See if you can get the one-year Bible, and this year we are reading the New King James Version. Know these and those. The New King James. Many times there are used ones that are in great shape for $4.98, $5.98. I've seen them over and over again for very little money. Get one, please, if you don't have a Bible, so that this makes more sense for you. Then you can underline. You can put little dates and little check marks or stars where things pop out at you from the Holy Ghost. So today we will be reading, to start off with, from Isaiah, Yeshayahu, chapter 48, picking up with verse 12. Isaiah 48, 12. Okay. Everybody says they just got sound. Hmm, too bad. You missed a wonderful song. I just might... Give the devil a black eye and sing it again. But I'm glad you have sound. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 48, picking up with 12. This whole chapter here, God is just saying again and again 
and drilling into our awareness that he is the Lord and there is no other, no other. So it begins, listen to me, O Jacob and Israel, my called. We could also say, Christians, you are called. Listen to me. I am he. I am the first. I am also the last. Indeed, my hand has laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has stretched out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. Now, did you get that? That, you talk about power. When I call to them, the Lord says, we're talking about the foundations of the earth. We're talking about all the heavens. He says, when I call to them, they stand up together. All of you assemble yourselves and hear. Who among them has declared these things? The Lord loves him. He shall do his pleasure on Babylon, and his arm shall be against the Chaldeans. I, even I have spoken, says God. Yes, I have called him. I have brought him, and his way will prosper. Come near to me. Hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, I was there. And now the Lord God and his spirit have sent me. Wow. Surely, when we get done with the book of Isaiah, there will be no one that doesn't firmly believe God sent him. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit. He doesn't teach us to lose. He teaches us to profit. Who leads you by the way you should go? Oh, that you had heeded my commandments. Then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Your descendants also would have been like the sand. Who can count the grains of sand? But God is saying, your descendants also would have been like the sand and the offspring of your body like the grains of sand. His name would not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. Go forth from Babylon, flee from the Chaldeans with a voice of singing, declare, proclaim this, utter it to the end of the earth. There's our commission, y'all. He's talking to us and these aren't empty words. He means it. Flee away from those who hold you down and with a voice of singing, declare, proclaim this, utter it to the end end of the earth say the Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob Jacob <coughs> and they did not thirst when he led them through the deserts he caused the waters to flow from the rock remember reading all that I mean who can cause water to come out of the rock nobody but the Lord, he also split the rock and the waters gushed out. There is no peace, <coughs> <coughs> says the Lord, for the wicked. And have you noticed that? There's no peace. The wicked don't have any peace. Listen, O coastlands, to me. And take heed, you peoples from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb, from the matrix of my mother. He has made mention of my name. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. 
in the shadow of his hand, he has hidden me and made me a polished shaft. <coughs> in his quiver, he has hidden me. Oh, aren't those beautiful words for him to be able to say? And he said to me, you are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. And then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and in vain. Yet surely my just reward is with the Lord and my work with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him <clears throat> so that Israel is gathered to him. For I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Indeed, he says, is it too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel? I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, their Holy One, to him whom man despises, to him whom the nation abhors, to the servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and he has chosen you. You. Yeah, he's chosen you. Thus says the Lord, <clears throat> in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. I will preserve you and give you as a covenant to the people to restore the earth. <clears throat> Do you hear that? That's what we are to be about, to begin to restore the earth. The Lord is coming the second time to rule and reign. And we are in on all of that kingdom work to cause them to inherit the desolate heritages, that you may say to the prisoners, go forth to those who are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed along the roads <clears throat> and their pastures shall be on all desolate heights. Isn't that, can you picture that? Beautiful pastures coming on desolate heights. They shall neither hunger nor thirst, neither heat nor sun shall strike them. For he who has mercy on them will lead them. Even by the springs of water, he will guide them. I will make each of my mountains a road and my highways shall be elevated. Highways way up. Surely these shall come from afar. Look, those from the north and the west, and these from the land of Senim. <clears throat> Sing, O heavens, be joyful, O earth, and break out in singing, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have mercy on his afflicted. But Zion, Zion, Scott would tell us, but Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. 
<clears throat> is that not a beautiful thought? Can you see the most enormous hands you could ever imagine as the Lord's and see that your name is inscribed on his hand? Your walls are continually before me. Your sons shall make haste. Your destroyers and those who laid you waste shall go away from you. Lift up your eyes. Look around and see all these gathered together, and they come to you. As I live, says the Lord, you shall surely clothe yourselves with them all as an ornament and bind them on you as a bride does for your waste and desolate places and the land of your destruction will even now be too small for the inhabitants and those who swallowed you up will be far away far away the children you will have after you have lost the others, will say again in your ears, the place is too small for me. How about that? Give me a place where I may dwell. And then you will say in your heart, who has begotten these for me since I have lost my children and am desolate, a captive, and wandering to and fro. And who has brought these up? There I was, left alone. But these, where were they? <clears throat> we move along with verse 22. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will lift my hand in an oath to the nations and set up my standard for the peoples they shall bring your sons in their arms, and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Kings shall be your foster fathers, and their queens your nursing mothers. They shall bow down to you with their faces to the earth, and lick up the dust of your feet. And then you will know that I am the Lord for they shall not be ashamed who wait for me. <clears throat> shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the captives of the righteous be delivered? Good questions. But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible be delivered. For I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save your children. I will feed those who oppress you with their own flesh, and they shall be drunk with their own blood as with sweet wine. All flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob, Jacob. And we move right along to chapter 50, 50 of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Where is the certificate of your mother's divorce, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? For your iniquities, you have sold yourselves. Boy, <clears throat> that's a hard statement, y'all. For your iniquities, for your sins, you have sold yourselves. And for your transgressions, your mother has been put away. Why, when I called... Was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Indeed, with my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers 
a wilderness. Their fish stink because there is no water and die of thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness and I make sackcloth their covering. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak. A word in season to him who is weary. <clears throat> he awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious, nor did I turn back. And now here's a little clip of our Lord, our precious Lord. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out my beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting for the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I will not be ashamed. He is near who justifies me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near me. Surely the Lord God will help me. Who is he who will condemn me? <clears throat> Indeed, they will all grow old like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord? Who among you fears the Lord? Good question. Is it you? Do you fear the Lord? Oh, I fear him. I mean, Judgment Day is more on my mind now than ever. And I picture myself standing by myself to be judged. It's time. It's time that we go over our lives, y'all. My dear brothers and sisters, it's time to get serious about this word. <clears throat> it's time to take in this reading whenever you hear it and apply it to yourself and apply it to your family, your nation. It's time. It's time. So he continues here. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near me, God says. Surely the Lord God will help me. Who is he who will condemn me? Good question. There's no one to condemn the Lord. Indeed, they will all grow old like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord? Who obeys the voice of his servant, who walks in darkness and has no light. Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely upon his God. Look, all you who kindle a fire, who encircle yourselves with sparks, walk in the light of your fire and in the sparks you have kindled. This you shall have from my hand. You shall lie down in torment. Wow. <clears throat> we finish off today <clears throat> with that fierce last line. This you shall have from my hand. You shall lie down in torment. Lord willing. <clears throat> we will pick up again tomorrow and continue reading. Now we move along, y'all, to the New Testament, to Ephesians, that beautiful, beautiful epistle. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4, picking up with verse 17. 
four, seventeen. Connie's got it right on there for you. This I say, and we're talk we're saying, Paul is saying, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, <clears throat> having their understanding darkened, being alienated <clears throat> from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness to walk all uncleanness with greediness. Oh, y'all, aren't you just looking at the society that's happening today? They are so lost. They are doing this. <clears throat> they don't even know it. They don't even know that they're past feeling. They don't even know that they've given themselves over to lewdness. They don't even know that all uncleanness is happening to them. They just think they're walking along that this is the way it is today. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. We have to there's a move we have to make. <clears throat> you know, I had to put this on this morning, one arm at a time in the armhole and put it on. That's what he's saying. Put on the new man. Therefore, put away lying. And here is a beautiful quote. Let each of you speak truth with his neighbor for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. <clears throat> and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all, now here's a list. Now look carefully and be honest with yourself. Are any of these demonic forces still in your life? Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, get rid of malice, <clears throat> and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Oh, y'all, that is so beautiful. I pray you will go back over that for yourself. <clears throat> Let your own voice speak it out that your ears might truly hear. All right, we move right along.
to Psalm 69. Psalm 69. Check out Kathy's graphics. Check them out. Go see. They, they awaken things within you to help bring the Word of God into full focus. Okay? This is another Psalm of David, and it was given to the chief musician who set it to a tune they called the lilies. Psalm 69. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I have come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary with my crying. My throat is dry. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. Those who hate me without a cause are more <clears throat> than the hairs of my head. They are mighty who would destroy me, being my enemies wrongfully. <clears throat> Though I have stolen nothing, I still must restore it. Oh God, you know my foolishness, and my sins are not hidden from you. Let not those who wait for you, O oh Lord God of hosts, be ashamed because of me. Let not those who seek you be confounded because of me, David cries. O oh God of Israel, because for your sake I have borne reproach. Shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my brothers and an alien to my mother's children because zeal for your house has eaten me up and the reproaches of those who reproach me, you have fallen on me. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that became my reproach. I also made sackcloth my garment. I became a byword to them. Those who sit in the gate speak against me, and I am the song of the drunkards. Oh, that had to have been so hard for David to hear. They made up songs. The drunkards made up songs. Very condemning, negative words to the song. And spread that around about David. But as for me, David says, my prayer is to you. O oh Lord, in the acceptable time, O oh God, in the multitude of your mercy, hear me in the truth of your salvation. Deliver me out of the mire and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from those who hate me <clears throat> and out of the deep waters. Let not the flood water overflow me, nor let the deep swallow me up. And let not the pit shut its mouth on me. Oh man, we can cry that one, can't we? <clears throat> you don't want the pit of hell to shut its mouth and swallow you, do you? No. We want to go to heaven. We want to go up, not down. Hear me, O oh Lord, for your loving kindness is good. Turn to me according to the multitude of your tender mercies. And do not hide your face from your servant, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily, draw near to my soul and redeem it. Deliver me because of my enemies. And you know, 
<clears throat> each one of us, do you have people that you know they don't like you, they, that you can see it on their face, they don't even want you to approach them? If you don't, if you don't have people who pretty much don't like you, then you must not be speaking up about Jesus enough. We need to speak up about Jesus. I mean, Paul was beaten, thrown out of places, left for dead, even died. God raised him back up. He went, and what did he do? Run away? No, he went right back in where he had been and continued to present Jesus Christ. Oh, y'all, we need to get some boldness. We need to gather it up and say, each one of us to ourselves, and I'm saying it to me, I'm not doing enough. I am not, I'm wasting too much time. I need to do more for the kingdom of God. I can't just be in this little cocoon enjoying myself. No, we have to get out there. Souls need to be saved. People are dying and going where the pit is going to shut its mouth on them. We have to have compassion for the lost. Please, please, please hear the Holy Spirit today. Please hear what he's saying to you. All right, y'all, we wrap up today's great reading. Oh, my goodness, I hope you have gotten a lot out of this. His word will feed you, build you up. Proverbs 24, verses 5 and 6. Proverbs 24, 5 and 6. If you don't have a Bible, Connie's put it right on there for you. Just read it along with us. <clears throat> a wise man is strong. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. For by wise counsel, you will wage your own war. And in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. There is safety. Stick with a bunch of believers. I mean, form a little prayer group. Meet for lunch and prayer. <clears throat> Get together. Because there is safety in a multitude of counselors. Don't try to do everything by yourself, on your own. There's times when he wants us to do something by ourselves, but we belong to a body. We need to be in that body saying, where do I fit? What are my gifts? What should I do? Who can I learn from? All of those good questions. All right, y'all. Let's wrap it up in prayer. Father God, we come to you, Lord. We come to you humbly. We come to you with our spirits laid down before you. Mm. Precious, precious, wonderful Father. You have fed us this morning. You have heard us. You have been here. Holy Spirit, you have been right here with us. I feel your presence so strong. So strong. It's wonderful. Lord, we hold up your Israel. We hold up your people. Lord, you are bringing your people from all over the earth, bringing them home, causing them to make that trip called Aliyah, to go back to live on the land. Father God, please, we pray for peace for Jerusalem. Peace within her walls, within her city. Let every hand that would rise in wrath or violence, let them be caught. Let every rocket, every fireball that's thrown over, let the Iron Dome catch it in midair for it ever hits the ground. Father God, we know you have many ways, but it is your right hand. It's your right hand that protects them. Please, Lord, we pray for peace for Jerusalem today. Peace. For them, it's the first day of the week. They've gone back to work. 
Father God, be with them. Be with them all. Give them wisdom for what they are doing. Cause them, Lord, to draw unto you. Lord, let the ruling body, the Knesset, let them find your will. Not their will, but your will, Lord. Let them operate and walk in your will, whether they know they are or not. Father God, you have a plan. We are very excited for the plan for your people. We are part of it. We've been grafted in. We are, we are part of the one new man. So exciting, Lord, that you would allow us to be there. Lord, I hold up America to you. We hold up many, many countries. We hold up China. We hold up Russia. We hold up India. We hold up the continent of Africa, North America, South America, Australia. We hold up everywhere you have created, Lord. And Lord, we pray that Holy Spirit will be sent out amongst all the people of the earth to draw them in special ways back to you, Lord. That's the message of the moment. We know it. The message of the moment is return to me. Repent and return. And we know that you are going to just keep making things more difficult, more difficult until a godly fear comes upon us and we truly repent and return to you. There needs to be a great end time harvest, Lord, a great sweeping through the whole earth, bringing as many as will repent and return, come to you, be washed clean by your blood. We need that, Lord. We need to pray and and testify that many might be saved from that pit that has been reserved for the devil and his demons. It was never intended for mankind. It was created for the devil and his fallen angels. But they want to take you and me. Father God, I pray, I pray, I pray for all these brothers and sisters. I pray, Lord, for anyone who has come to just, they stumbled on it maybe, and they're, they're saying, well, I'll, I'll listen now. What, what is this about? Please, please take this word of God and take it seriously and let your own spirit, your own self, Put away that list we read in the New Testament. Malice, bitterness, unforgiveness, all that list. Recognize that if that's a problem for you. And repent. Say, I give this bitterness to you, Lord. I break its hold on me. I will not carry this bitterness anymore for so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so of things that maybe happened years ago. It is wake up time, y'all. God is waking up the dead in their hearts and spirit. The sleeping, spiritually sleeping, waking us up. Move with it. Don't push it away. Don't push Holy Ghost. We read today, do not grieve Holy Spirit. Oh, that's the worst thing you could do is grieve him. It's the only unforgivable sin is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, we're asking you to go out amongst all peoples, all languages, all countries, and bring in, start bringing in this harvest. Fire up believers to get up, to preach, testify, to love them, to share with them. Precious God, I pray, I pray 
that you will use us, that you will wake us up, cause us to be kingdom-minded, and use our time wisely towards that. Father, I'd ask you to hear all the prayers of these brothers and sisters. They are praying for friends and relatives who are sick, very ill, some of them near death. Father, please, please, I ask you, hear their prayers and bring answers that are miraculous, healing, deliverance, all in the name of your precious Son, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. And all God's people cried a hearty, Amen, Amen. And I will sign off <clears throat> with these great words I glanced down, see Connie's put on there. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in you a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within you. Have a great day. I love you all so much. But Jesus loves you with a love that no one else has. Receive him. Open up your heart today and receive him. Amen and amen. Bye-bye.